Let's start with an overview of two-dimensional projectile motion. We covered the basics of projectile motion in the introduction video, so watch that one first. In the last video, we learned about one-dimensional projectile motion, where an object only moves up and down. 2D projectile motion just adds a horizontal velocity, and it's very similar to 1D projectile motion. So watch that video if you haven't already. In 1D projectile motion, we only dealt with motion in the y direction. In 2D projectile motion, we have motion in the x and y directions. Whenever an object moves sideways through the air, it's in 2D projectile motion. This shows up everywhere, especially in sports. The initial velocity and angle determine how far the ball travels and how high it is at each point. They also determine the direction of the velocity at every point along the path. Changing the initial angle just a few degrees changes the entire trajectory. Even if something moves really fast, gravity still causes it to fall down, so its path is never a straight line. We usually focus on the path of one object, but 2D projectile motion can help us understand other things, like the shape and range of a stream of water. If we ignore air resistance, an object always falls at the same rate due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So a ball that's launched horizontally will hit the ground at the same time as a ball that falls straight down. So what's different about 2D projectile motion that we haven't already covered? In 1D projectile motion, an object moves in the y direction, and it doesn't move sideways. The initial velocity is also the initial y velocity. The velocity in the x direction is zero. But in 2D projectile motion, an object does move sideways, so it has some velocity in the x direction. The initial velocity is not vertical, it's usually at an angle. So now we have an initial y velocity and an initial x velocity. The acceleration in the y direction is always 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. But there's no acceleration in the x direction, ax is zero. So the horizontal velocity, vx, is constant the entire time. The final x velocity at any time is the same as the initial x velocity. In 2D projectile motion, we call the horizontal displacement the range of the projectile motion. That's how far the object travels in the x direction. For 2D projectile motion, we're going to use the same kinematic equations for the y direction, but we also need some equations in the x direction. Since there's no horizontal acceleration, we won't use the x equations with acceleration, so we just have the displacement and velocity equations. And remember, the equations can be rearranged in different ways. If we say up is the positive y direction, then we're going to plug in negative g, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, for a y. Finally, even though the variables in the x and y equations are different, Time shows up in both directions. T has the same value in both equations at the same moment in time. So we can use time to connect the x and y equations. In 1D projectile motion, there's only three initial conditions. In 2D projectile motion, we have some new scenarios. Let's say up is the positive y direction and right is the positive x direction. If the initial angle is above the horizontal, the initial y velocity points upwards, so it's positive. The final height could be the same as the initial height, like if it starts and ends at the ground. The final height could be greater than the initial height, like if it's going over a wall or landing at a higher point. Or the final height could be less than the initial height, like if it's launched from a cliff. If that's the case, the initial velocity could also be horizontal, 
so the initial y velocity is zero. Or the angle could even be below the horizontal, so the initial y velocity points downwards and it's negative. The only difference between these scenarios is the initial and final values and the positive and negative signs. But the motion behaves the same way in each case. We're going to use the same equations and solve problems the same way for each one. So that's an overview of 2D projectile motion.